Well, we're, we really do provide a great service. Um, women have um, unique GI issues. Um, we deal with a lot of uh, issues related to pregnancy. So you see patients with inflammatory bowel disease who end up pregnant. They're on, they you know have a chronic illness and they're on a lot of medications that you know make them concerned how those medications could maybe impact a pregnancy. So we um, we focus on those patients. Also, there's some GI issues unique to women. Um, sometimes hyperemesis gravidarum, which is a nausea, severe vomiting that you get during pregnancy. We take care of that. Um, viral hepatitis in pregnancy. Also pelvic floor issues. So people who have either fecal incontinence or um, other other pelvic floor issues. We run a pelvic floor center with a colorectal surgeon and um, we have uh, uh, physical uh, pelvic floor physical therapy and biofeedback and all these other services that we offer. So today I did. Uh, I gave a talk at the postgraduate course about treatment options for C. difficile infection. Yeah, it's big. So C. diff is now it's surpassed MRSA as the most common hospital acquired infection, and um, we're seeing more C. diff in um, even populations of people that we previously thought were low risk. Uh, we used to think you know you have to be in the hospital for a long, long time, get a lot of antibiotics, or be really elderly to get C. diff. Now we're seeing it in healthy people in the community, women who are young and postpartum. Um, getting this um, it can be uh, a very serious thing. You can have any Think we're from you know sort of mild to moderate diarrhea to ending up in the hospital. People end up in intensive care units, die, lose their colon. It can be a really um, devastating um, illness. So um, my talk was really treatment focused. So we talked about you know treating uh, treating C diff and kind of stratifying it by um, um, how severe the infection is. Um, and, you know what antibiotics to use to treat you know mild, moderate versus more severe and complicated infection. And I also spent a good amount of time on alternative therapeutic options, including fecal microbiota transplant or. FMT, also known as stool transplant for patients with recurrent disease. So patients with mild to moderate C. diff, who um, they can be treated first line with metronidazole, um, which is inexpensive. Um, it's an oral antibiotic um, given uh, three times a day for you know 10 to 14 days. Um, patients who are intolerant to metronidazole, pregnant or nursing, we usually treat them with vancomycin. Um, it's more expensive, so that's one of the reasons we don't use it uh, first line in those milder patients. Um, also, same treatment, you know, 10 to 14 day course of treatment with that. Um, people who have more severe infection and are hospitalized with very high um, white blood cell counts, uh, renal uh, dysfunction, um, low albumin, abdominal tenderness, we go right to vancomycin with those patients. We don't start, you know, with, we don't start with metronidazole. Uh, we go right to the kind of more um, uh, uh, effective or powerful treatment. Um, and we give uh, a course there if patients have a complicated infection, they're in the intensive care unit, very sick with, uh, you know, organ failure or, um, um, you know, C. diff that's not responding uh, to therapy. We, you know, surgical consultation, getting surgeons involved to potentially um, intervene. Um, and you know those patients are treated with both vancomycin and flagyl, um, both in, in, in the vancomycin is used in high doses in those patients. Um, and then um, finally, you know, in terms of uh, kind of, we have some people who they initially they get better with a course of treatment, but then as soon as the treatment is stopped, they recur and have another episode, and they can kind of develop these subsequent episodes of recurrent C. diff. And for those people. Um, we treat an initial episode of C. diff, you know, a first recurrence, the same as we treated the initial episode. So you can give either flagyl or vancomycin for a first recurrence. If they continue to have recurrences, you give vancomycin, but in a tapering or pulse dose regimen. And then finally, if once they've had, once they failed to uh, maintain a cure after one of those uh, tapering pulse dose regimens, then they're a candidate for FMT. that um, the epidemiology of C. diff is changing and that we're seeing um, more C. diff out there and we're seeing it in populations that we previously thought were more low risk, um, that there are, that the treatment options really are stratified based on the severity of disease and that's coming to you, and that fecal microbiota transplant is probably the most effective treatment for recurrent C. diff that we have. It's over, about 90% effective. No. The FDA um, has stated that they believe FMT is a biologic and a drug and that its use is only permissible um, in this country to treat C. difficile not responding to standard therapy. So be it pediatric or adult, um, I've done FMT on someone as old as 95, so there's no upper upper limit. And really, C. diff is um, uh, uh, most 
cases of C. diff occur in patients over 65 years old. So that's where you're seeing most disease and most recurrences. Uh, but I've heard of FMP, FMT being done on two-year-olds as well with, um, with good effect.